One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. It is that time of year again for us to have our best books of the year episode. So I've done this for a few years now where I will share with you some of my favorite books that I read and <laughs> I to be real transparent with you. This year I didn't read too much. I really didn't. I think that I like I was seriously scrambling to come up with five. I usually do a top five books of the year, and I was about to do a repeat of one of my favorite books from 2020. And then I was like, wait, 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 no, no, no. I forgot. There was another one. Y'all, I, I think that I might have only read five books this year. I know it's bad. It's bad. I read probably 30 books or so in 2018. I was just in this consuming mode of I got to get my hands on everything. And I have just, I think it's because I've been listening to so many podcasts. And I, when I read a book at night, I will just fall asleep. So I haven't been, haven't been reading as much, but I did have five books that I want to share with you of 2021. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of podcasting, think of this show as the time-saving shortcut you've been looking for. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, so the books that I'm sharing with you today are not in order of how I read them or how I would rank them, <laughs> even though the first one is going to be probably my favorite fast read of the year, and I am... I'm still giving myself a pat on the back that I finished this book. Like my younger version of myself is saying, Crystal, you just read a 600 page book. Like give yourself a standing ovation because we never thought you would ever do that. <laughs> so a little backstory on me. I didn't read a lot whenever I was growing up. Yes, I used to read like 
the Babysitter's Club, and of course, I was in the Goosebumps, right? R.L. Stein, come on. Like we, I loved, I loved Goosebumps. But other than that, I really didn't read a ton just for pleasure. I actually wanted to scratch my eyes out when I found out I had to read The Scarlet Letter. I think it was my going into my freshman year of high school. I was like, if you want to be in this advanced English class, you have to read The Scarlet Letter. I had all summer. I even had a long airplane ride that I could have read the whole thing and I still didn't read it. And I think I tried to do like the spark notes or the cliff notes version and it, things didn't work out well. I didn't get into honors English my freshman year of high school because I did not read that book. And it's really not even a big book. I tell you all of that because I'm not someone that I would say I'm a avid reader, but I loved the very first book. So you're like, Crystal, just stop teasing us. Tell us what it is. So book number one, that I found super interesting for 2021 was Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. This was so good. So a little backstory. I read All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. Um, I guess that came out in 2019. I think that's when it came out. I could be totally wrong. But um and I loved that book. This was another book of his. He was a Pulitzer Prize winner. And my mother-in-law read it and she gave me the hard copy. And she was like, you have to read this book. And I don't remember what was going on, but I just picked it up one day. I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I guess I'll try this out. It was so good at the pacing of how it was written. So it was like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, short chapters. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so good. And so I loved that book. So when this one came out and I saw it in, in an airport earlier this year and it was so thick, it, it was 600 pages. And this is a totally a fiction book, by the way. I don't know if I said that already, but uh, it was a fiction book. And I just remember looking at it and saying, there's no way I could read this book. I had that imposter syndrome, all that fear and doubt, like all those emotions from my childhood totally came up and was like, you could never read a book. That's that thick. But I remember how good it felt to finish his last book and how I just could not put it down. I was like, this book has to be that good too. So I read a 600 page book in less than a week <laughs> because I could not put it down. It was so, so good. I can only imagine that the audio version would have been just as good, but it was also around the time where if you listen to the potty report, you know this, I had said, man, I feel like I've been on my phone way too much. I am going to read more before the end of the year. And this was the first book back into that, which actually accelerated my ability to read more because y'all, if you can read a 600 page book in a week, like, let's be honest, I got three kids, I got a business, I got lots of things going on. That was me legitimately not putting it down in my free time. And there was a, probably a Saturday in there where I read for several hours because I put, could not put it down. It was so stinking good. So go grab that one, Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. So the second one, and I have to throw in, we have fiction and nonfiction here today. The second one is for those of you that are struggling to get really, really focused on what you need to be doing, Okay. So this could be about your podcast, this could be about your business, this could be about your personal life, right? And I've had this recommended to me many times, and I've had it on my bookshelf. This isn't even something I had to go buy, but this was a really good book. So it's Essentialism by Greg McCowan, and it was so good. It was so good. I have actually listened to him on multiple podcasts talk about his book and talk about what he teaches in his book and all the things about essentialism. But for some reason, one day, and I read this this summer, one day something clicked where it was like, Crystal, you need to just take this book to the pool with you. I was going to our neighborhood pool with the kids. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take it. Yeah, I've been saying I need to read book, read more books this year. I'm going to take it with me. Again, it was one that I could not put down, and it wasn't a long read. It was definitely, it's a smaller book, 
there was lots of illustrations in the book about essentialism, which I thought were fun. It was like, hey, you actually don't need this. You should concentrate on that. So if you are struggling to really get hyper-focused, this is a great book to read at the end of the year, at the beginning of a year, or whenever you're trying to get very clear on your goals, because it will help you really decide, well, what's most important to you, right? What are those essential things that you should be concentrating on? And one of my biggest takeaways for me was how I wanted my life to be. Like what was actually essential to me finding happiness in my life, both professionally and personally? And how can I help both of those things align? And it's helped me, which I've already been really strict on my own time management and how I spend time on projects and when I'm working versus spending time with my family. But this really helped open my eyes even more to how I could be more efficient. So not just doing the essential things, but being a lot more efficient whenever I am working on my business or spending time with my family or doing whatever it is that I'm doing in my life. So Essentialism by Greg McCowan. So, so, so good. And I recommend the hard copy, like I said, because there are illustrations in there that are great. I recommend the hard copy for all of these. Actually, now that, now that I'm looking at all the, I, I have the, either the paperback or the hard copy of all of these books. So I, I do love an audiobook, but I also like getting disconnected from all technology and reading a actual book from time to time. That's just my preference. You can do do with that information whatever you want. <laughs> okay, the third book I have is From Paycheck to Purpose by Ken Coleman. So if you listen to this podcast on a regular basis, you know that I went to Ramsey Solutions in Nashville in the month of November. And it was so cool because it was actually the week that Ken released this book. And, or maybe it was the week before he released it. I don't know. It was right around lunchtime because I actually had the opportunity. I was sitting in the lobby. It was one of the days before the, the daily conference was starting and I was sitting next to someone and, you know, I just gently was like, Hey, what it is it? What do you do? Because I noticed that he was getting a lot of people and I didn't do, I wasn't the weirdo that sat down and was like, Hey, tell me about your life story. I was sitting there and then multiple people were walking in to, the hotel and they were like, Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? You know, and they were calling him by his first name. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like he must work at their company. We'll come to find out he worked on Ken Coleman's team as they were launching their book, this book, Paycheck to Purpose or From Paycheck to Purpose. And I told him, I was like, Hey, I actually just got that book. It's at, it's in my suitcase. I'm going to, I'm going to read it later on my airplane ride home. And he was like, yeah, that's really cool. We actually just hit number two on the bestseller list. I'm like, that's incredible. So I knew, okay, it, I don't know if you ever have that, like if a friend recommends a book to you after you've already kind of had it on your list, you're even more prone to like bring it up higher in your list to read it sooner. And that's what happened. I took it with me when my husband and I went on vacation and I read it on the beach and I couldn't put it down. And it's funny because... The book was really written for people that are probably in a corporate job that are unhappy or they're just kind of in that, oh, I don't know what I want to do with my life stage. And I still found it super, super valuable, really helpful because it helped me understand a little bit more about where I can get clearer on my bigger goals because I get caught a lot of the time in the day to day. And even though I'm a visionary, I'm a planner, I'm a dreamer, I like to have really big goals. But at the end of the day, I get caught in the weeds very often and don't kind of look up and take a look around and say, is this really what I want to be doing when it comes to decisions in my business or how I'm creating content, like all of those different things. So from paycheck to purpose reminded me again that what I'm doing is not about me right? Like the things that I'm creating on the podcast, the things that I'm creating for YouTube, the different things that I'm doing in my business, they're not about me. And if they are, then I'm doing something wrong because that's not my purpose. And I've shared this before, but I feel like the reason why I've gotten into content creation is to help other people that have important message to share with other people. And I'm working on a, a new 
kind of branding experiment in the next year. And it's going to be really pushing hard into this serving mentality of the audience at large, which is you, listener, as well as other people that consume my content, because I know that you have a really important message to share And I want to help you get that message to your community. So I don't really want to call it my mission statement or my brand tagline. I'm not really sure exactly what the language is, but my gut is telling me you're meant to help people who help people. That's really what my purpose is. And this book really helped me find a little bit more of that clarity. And so I recommend it. I mean, if you know someone that's struggling with that kind of identity crisis of what am I supposed to be doing? Like what's, and Ken gives great examples of his own life and other people that he's talked to. And it was, it was just a really, really great read. And again, it wasn't super hard either. So From Paycheck to Purpose by Ken Coleman, highly recommend it. All right, number four on our top five books of 2021. I have not finished this book. Let me just be really transparent. I have not finished it because of the way that it's formatted. It's formatted not like a dictionary, but kind of like a dictionary. (laughs) I'll explain. But it's Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown. I love Brene Brown. I have this stupid thing that I tell my husband and he laughs at me so hard. So I've read all of her books. I've read all of her books that she's ever put out. And we live in the Houston area. She lives in the Houston area. And I told my husband and I've seen her, like I went to see her and Marie Forleo in 2019 when Marie released her book, Everything is Figure Outable. I went to downtown Houston. I watched them. I got to talk to Brene Brown and Marie Forleo. It was this whole thing. It was so incredible. Such a fun night. But I love her so much. And I told my husband, I was like, what if I go into a random gas station and she's there? Or what if I'm just randomly in a store and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Brene Brown. What if the target that I go to is one day the same target that she goes to, right? It's such a ridiculous fantasy, but it is absolutely something that I have thought of more than once on multiple occasions. And this is just, again, showing my like super dorky side of how I think and (laughs) the weird things that go through my mind. But uh, yeah, that's my, my little tiny obsession with Brene Brown. But this book was so freaking incredible. Y'all, I was crying. I was legitimately tearing up in the introduction of this book. This is how deep she speaks to my soul and what this book is about. So it's called Atlas of the Heart, and it's all about understanding emotions. And I just found it so fascinating. As someone who, I mean just to get real personal real fast, I have always kind of had issues with processing a lot of my emotions. And so to see that there are actual definitions, like I said, it's legitimately like a dictionary of emotions and what certain things mean. And she gives her own real life examples of how she has processed these emotions, what they have looked like in her life, how she's just really understood more about who she is as a person and understood more about her own family by writing this book. And I think that she said that there was a a three-year research that was done in so many people that they interviewed to understand, is she the only one that feels this way? Or are there multiple people that feel this way about these specific emotions? So Highly, highly recommend. It was so freaking good. If you love her work on vulnerability or shame, you will appreciate Atlas of the Heart. Okay, our last and final book is another nonfiction, and it is called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. So I, y'all know that I'm a huge fan of my mentor, Amy Porterfield, and I have been following her own journey because she's in the process of writing a book, and I recently joined a a masterclass where she presented 
a little bit about her own book journey. It was like this behind the scenes, three-part training series that was so incredible. And one of the recommendations that she offered was reading Bird by Bird. And I've heard of Anne Lamont and I've heard um, a lot of the other great writers that I follow, especially I'm the person that pops in my head is Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, who also wrote Big Magic, which is one of my favorite books of all time. She talks about Anne Lamont a lot. So I'm like, well, she comes highly recommended. I can't go wrong with this book. This was another book that I could not put down. And that is because I'm in the process of writing a book proposal for another book that I plan to hopefully get traditionally published in the future. That is my goal. Like that's the trajectory that we're on is I've self-published two books. I would love to have a traditionally published book for no other reason other than to say I've had a book traditionally published as well. So Bird by Bird is all about writing. And I recommend it, even if you're not thinking about writing a novel or writing a nonfiction book or writing a book, period, if you want to become a better writer for your email marketing, for your social media captions, any of those things, I recommend this book because she helps you understand writing processes and how sometimes you just have to get everything out of your head onto paper or into a Google Doc and then make it better from there. It's what is called the shitty first draft. And I had heard that from multiple other people that were actually quoting her. (laughs) She's actually the one where that came from. And so it was just really interesting to read all of her information from the source and not hearing it secondary from these other writers who they have changed their own writing style because of the things that they've learned from her. So highly recommend Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. It is so fantastic. It was really, really good. But that's all I have for you today. That is the top five books of 2021. And I hope that you go and grab these. If you're you're still in the market for holiday shopping, I don't know, maybe that time has already come and gone for you. But if you're thinking, man, I'm going to I'm going to go and add these to my shopping cart, maybe you have some holiday money left over. I don't know. But <laughs> you should go grab all of these. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash episode 318 to find all the links for these and go read them and then come back and tell me what did you think? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Did you want, did it leave you with more? And just tell me all the things. Did it leave you with more? I don't know. I'm not even making sense now. Did it leave you wanting more? Okay. See, maybe I should read something on being a better speaker and not saying, saying, (laughs) saying things wrong. But if you listen to the show, you know, I always, always get metaphors incorrect, but that's okay. That's okay. You don't come here to listen to me saying metaphors correctly. I understand this, but that's all I have for you today. So make sure you hit the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening to this podcast. And as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.